Well, here's a video that's kind of out of date, but it's out of date in a good way. The majority of the video you're about to watch was recorded a few weeks ago before the news about Australia's newest dinosaur broke. The fossils discussed in this video are the actual fossils of what is now called Fostoria dimbangumal, but you'll notice that they're referred to as belonging to the Foster's dinosaur because the name Fostoria wasn't official when this video was recorded. The dinosaur is named after Bob Foster, who found the amazing pieces, which were generously donated to the Australian Opal Centre by his children, Greg and Joanne. This video is mostly about the fossils and the techniques used to analyse them, and not so much about the actual discovery of the fossils and the naming process. So I'll leave some links below to some great news articles if you'd like to read more about the discovery of Fostoria. Lightning Ridge in northern New South Wales, Australia is famous for black opal. It's also famous for dinosaurs, so it makes sense that Lightning Ridge is also home to this. This dinosaur is the most complete opalized dinosaur anywhere in the world. This is a small Mudabarosaurus, a herbivore, so I don't feel at all threatened standing here. This is this dinosaur's had its head in the window here for some years now. Its tail's next door outside, if you believe me. So you might already be familiar with Mudabarosaurus. It was first named in 1963, it's been around a while, and the dinosaur lived in what is now central Queensland. It was discovered near the town of Mudabara, hence the name. The dinosaur discovered in 1986 by Bob Foster in Lightning Ridge is also an iguanodontid like Mudabarosaurus. So Mudabarosaurus is kind of a great reference point if you're already familiar with that dinosaur. I spoke to Dr. Phil Bell from UNE Armadale about what is now a new species. So here in Lightning Ridge we have our own species. It's very distinct from Mudabarosaurus um, and because we have bones that are directly comparable with Mudabarosaurus we can get an understanding of just how different it was. So this animal, as far as we can tell, was quite a bit smaller. It may have been around four to five meters in length. It was a herbivorous animal, uh, generally moving around on two legs, but would have been quite happy moving around on four as well. And just the same as with Iguanodon, which is its more famous cousin uh, from uh, the UK. As I mentioned, the Australian Opal Centre is home to the opalised fossils of Fostoria. Which is in fact the best preserved dinosaur skeleton ever discovered in New South Wales. I'll show you the material, or some of it anyway, over here. Okay, this is just a few of the bones of the Foster dinosaur. Opalised fossils are, are rare for a start. Um, so to have so many bones of one animal is really remarkable and very important for us as paleontologists to get a, a really full understanding of what kind of animal we're dealing with here. We have some rib pieces here. This is caudal vertebra, tailbone, way down the end of the tail where the tail's fairly strappy and thin. This is the lower part of the femur. Again, another vertebra, caudal. A little bit higher up in the series, a little bit closer to the head. This, again, is a compacted vertebra. This beautiful object, the complete phalanx, possibly a hand bone. But you can see it has a line of opal colour in it. Fantastic piece, just that's the complete element. In fact, when we first started this investigation, uh, it was just assumed that all these bones belonged to one animal. In fact, that belongs to parts of four animals, ranging in different sizes from juveniles through to uh, presumably adults as well. And Foster's dinosaur is made up of, I think there's 50 to, between 50 and 60 bone elements. So it is the most complete opalized dinosaur in the world, and certainly the most complete dinosaur from New South Wales. And one of the, one of the most complete from Australia. In this block in front of me, we have part of the vertebrae, uh, one of the hip bones, a number of ribs and one of the bones from the foot. So you can see 
This is the opal dirt around. There's still bones hidden behind, but because of new technologies being applied to this material, we know exactly what's inside this block. There's another one as well. With this block, it's still in a plaster jacket, which is keeping all the bones more or less in place, ensuring that the pieces are not damaged. And as we'd prefer to keep it like that for display purposes, because it's so terrific to see it actually in the, in the clay stone, some of the techniques that are being used at Armadale Uni include CAT scanning and then 3D printing of bones that are actually concealed inside there. So we were able to take blocks like this that still had bones uh, in the rock and put them into medical CAT scanners. Uh, these are the same CAT scanners that they would put your eye in uh, if we had a, a broken back or something like that. And we can take those digital images and process them on the computer and extract the bones from the rock and print them out in 3D. So here we have this same vertebra that you can see here, um, but now I have the benefit of being able to see it from all angles and uh, being able to see the entirety of it uh, is far more informative from, uh, from a scientific standpoint uh, to understand this animal. And this is what is revealed, which is pretty wonderful. This is from the other block, similar block. This is part of the brain case of this big orn ornithopod dinosaur. This is really important material because skull bones are so diagnostic, holding all sorts of information. And this is probably the first skull material from New South Wales of dinosaur skull material. Paleontology, and not just dinosaurs, uh, is increasingly borrowing from existing technologies that are used in other fields. So the, the machines and the technology that we use for this was in part borrowed from the medical world, uh, but also from engineering as well. So the software that we use to basically create these 3D models, um, we also use in, in uh, modeling of bridges and other uh, structures that engineers will use to test how uh, different structures will react to different stresses and so you can actually apply those same principles to 3D bones uh, to see how these animals moved, how their muscles would have reacted um, against the, the forces of, of locomotion, walking, um, running. Uh, so we can actually get a far clearer understanding of how these animals moved, how they interacted with the world around them because of these new technologies. This video was made with the support and participation of the Australian Opal Centre in Lightning Ridge and Dr Phil Bell from UNE Armadale. If you visit Lightning Ridge, and you should visit Lightning Ridge, you should visit the Australian Opal Centre. The AOC operates an annual Lightning Ridge fossil dig co-hosted with the Australian Geographic Society so you too can help to find amazing opalized fossils and learn to identify creatures from 110 million years ago. There's a link in the description for more information. If you enjoyed this video and you think I've earned it, please consider subscribing to IDU Curiosity on YouTube, and you can also follow IDU Curiosity on all of the usual social media channels, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that. Thank you for watching.